Now, another thing you find useful with the MFS is its ability to help you cut inlays. Uh, now, there are loads of different ways of doing it. I'm not only going to show one, um, but this is just to give you an idea. Uh, you may recall that uh, uh, a while ago I did something about inlays using a, a white side inlay kit, uh, and this was the sort of thing I produced. And I've just cut that through there, so you can see that these were pretty thick pieces of wood that I'd cut for this inlay. What I intend to do is put a rectangular inlay into this piece of wood. It will have rounded corners uh, and uh, I, the piece I'm inlaying will be this piece of mahogany. Now this is uh, just over two millimeters. It's 2.4 millimeters in thickness uh, and I cut it uh, with my bandsaw. Uh, uh, you may have seen the video where I did that. Now I'm not going to use the white side kit. Uh, good as it is, there's nothing wrong with it. I just want to show you a different way of doing it. And I'll be using this threaded guide bush set uh, made by UJK. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure something similar is available elsewhere in the world under different names. Uh, and this fits into a, a special guide insert onto my OF1400 router. Yeah, there are two sizes I need to choose. One is a 30 millimeter and the other is a 14 millimeter one. And the combination of those two sizes plus my 8mm cutter, which is already in the router, should give me uh, a perfect fit between the, the male and the female parts. Now, I'll, I'll be setting up the MFS uh, with a rectangular hole, which will be uh, the, the basic part of my template. Uh, but there's an issue with these square corners. If you were to take uh, a guide bush, this is a 30mm guide here, and go around there like so, then this corner here uh, will produce a slightly different shape than you would get uh, with the uh, smaller uh, guide bush. This is the 14 millimeter one. So when you then took the male part and the female part and brought them together, they wouldn't quite match in that corner. Now, in order that a male and female part will match when you're using two different sizes of guide bush, the curve of any fillet uh, has to be a greater radius than the larger of the two guide bushes you're using. So this, the radius of the 30mm one is 15mm, so the radius of this corner uh, needs to be at least 15mm or more. Well, it's got no radius at all because it is a straight uh, right angle, and so we need to have some form of radius there. And that's where uh, this comes in. Now this is a, a kit of four parts. It's been sent to me free of charge uh, and it's come to me through a company called Shapeways, which are a, as far as I can see, a worldwide uh, organization which allows people uh, with 3D printers to market their products. And this one has been designed by someone who calls himself Nightingale. And it was introduced to me uh, by uh, a chap whose name I'll put on the screen. Uh, and these fillets push into the corner, they're, they're designed to fit into the MFS, um, the inner sort of slot that's there. They push into the corners and they then round them off. And this radius is 20 millimeters. So that means that uh, my 30 millimeter uh, you know, uh, guide bush, which has got a radius of 15, uh, will work through there perfectly. So I'm now gonna set this up using these parts from Shapeways. Now the only problem I had with, with, with these is that they were 0.3 millimeter oversized in this part that fits into that channel. And so all I did was I just uh, got my little block of wood here with a piece of sandpaper down the edge and just went to and fro and took a, a tiny bit off. Uh, slight nuisance, but when you've got something which is as unique as this, it's probably worth the effort. Now part of my clamping strategy is this uh, Festal clamp here which is coming up through from underneath my MFT3 and I'm going to put it in the uh, channel here which in the MFS which is designed to take a clamp like this and I'm just going to feed that in there and I'm now going to move this across and get it positioned as I wish and obviously if this were for a particular job then I'd have to have some scheme for uh, making sure it's in the right place uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm not trying to make anything elegant here. And so I'm now going to just tighten this clamp up from underneath. 
So that's one one clamp there. Actually, do you know, to, that's not bad, but it's not quite good enough. So what I could now do, if I had a piece of this material, same thickness, is to put a clamp out here or right there, or maybe both, uh, and that would help secure it. I'll do that now. Now I need to set the uh, plunge depth for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is to plunge it down till it touches uh, the surface of the wood. Uh, and then I'm going to raise the, the uh, plunge bar here, and I'm going to put my piece of wood under there. And when it's under there, I'm then going to lock that off like so. So the theory is now that is that that distance there is about the thickness of my piece of wood. So we're now ready to go. And that's that first piece done. That's a very nice smooth bottom uh, little channel. I've now put the smaller guide bush in here. This is the 14 millimeter one, uh, but my cut is still the same. Uh, uh, this time I just need to adjust my depth downwards slightly because I want to definitely cut through my veneer. So I'm just going to very carefully raise the plunge stop to there. And I've used a piece of double-sided tape uh, to uh, attach my veneer to this sacrificial piece so that when I do the last bit of the cut, it doesn't move. And of course, everything is clamped down as it should be. Now this time, I've got to remember not to uh, stray into the material. I've got to keep pushed up against the outside at all times. So here goes. And there that is, I've pushed it in. It's the first one I've done. I'm not gonna do another one to try and better it. Uh, there's a slight gap there, probably my fault. Uh, very slight gap there. Maybe I just move slightly, but it, uh, it still proves the point. Uh, I've gone slightly too deep as well, but uh, that doesn't really matter. Obviously it'd be slightly better with a thick veneer like this uh, to have it so it's slightly proud and then you plane it uh, flat to the surface. Uh, but that proves the point that the uh, MFS can be used for doing inlay work, even uh, when you want a rounded corner. Right, I'm going to just describe two other uses of the MFS, but I'm not going to uh, demonstrate them. Now, this I've called this thing a guide bush receiver. I don't know if that's its proper name, uh, but it's a block of aluminium with a, a fractionally over 30 millimeter hole there. And it's got these uh, little tongues here, uh, which fit uh, inside uh, the grooves of the MFS rails. Now, uh, that is uh, 48 millimeters uh, by 50 millimeters. So one could uh, set this up, so this is 48, tighten it up uh, and make sure that's at 48 at that end, tighten it up uh, and have it set to whatever length you need. And you can very easily work out where the center of your cutter is going to be. And you then get your router uh, with the 30 millimeter guide bush in there and uh, you place it in there and then uh, do a cut. And that then produces the channel of the precise length that you want. So that's one use of that um, uh, 30 millimeter block. And the other way you might use this is for trammel work. And now uh, I'm gonna turn this over and then introduce this piece. Now this is a uh, trammel pivot point, whatever you like to call it. And you'd slide this in into this channel here and then position it so it's just at the center here. And that's basically butting it up against one of the extrusions, tighten that up. So there's my pivot point. We now turn this over. Now we've got the trammel point, which is uh, directly underneath here. Uh, and uh, you now need to know where to position this. Well, it's dead easy. Uh, the distance from the center of the trammel point to this edge is 12 millimeters. And if you look on this block here, uh, you've got divisions in millimeters, and it just happens from the center there to that zero, it's 12 millimeters. So all you do is you loosen that off, read down this scale here, uh, and that will be uh, center to center uh, for uh, your work where that zero is. So if I set this on 260, which is there, tighten that up, 
And if we were now to actually do the trammel work as we went round here, uh, the centre to centre radius would be 260 millimetres. Now, the only negative thing I found out about the MFS was one person who'd managed to destroy the heads of these cap screws, which are used uh, to fix everything in place. Um, but that same person found a solution. He just bought some new ones. The cap screw heads were slightly too big, and he just filed those off. Now, that's it. That's my whistle stop tour done. Uh, I must confess that when I started this, I thought, hmm, I'm not convinced the MFS is for me. Uh, but I am now. And the reason I am is that you can see all the old uh, bits of jig and stuff I've got behind me, all the old trammels and so on. Well, they're taking up storage space and none of them are actually as accurate as they were when I first made them because they've been hanging around so long. So I, I think the MFS has a lot to offer. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.